Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. We are here live from the Virginia Chantilly Studios at Kardec Radio. And we're very happy that today we're able to stream live uh, through the Facebook tool so you can watch us as well if you cannot connect directly to us at Kardec Radio today. If you are listening to us on demand, you can always, always um, click on our programs on iTunes as well. We have a channel at iTunes. By the way, did you know that at cardecradio.com, we have a very, very uh, interesting tab. It's about the Spiritist audiobooks. If you go there, beautiful works. We have uh, audio files of books such as the Spirits book by Alan Kardec, which were beautifully recorded for more than two and a half years by John DeRosa and Steve Shepard. And you know, you can play on it. You can also download it. You can listen on our iTunes channel on the Spirits book or the Heaven and Hell book, No Solar by Andrea Lewis, Psychographed by Chico Xavier, and Jesus in the Home. Wonderful friends. More than 60 friends around the world have helped us put together these efforts, and we are very grateful to them. You know, Kardec Radio has five programs a week, new programs every week, which are uh, worked upon by a very large team, which is around the world. And you can join us. If you're watching us or listening to us, you can join us. You may ask, Vanessa, how can I help? We need editors. We need uh, people who uh, help us putting together the recording of inspirational messages in Spiritism. If you have a Spiritist book in English and you think you have a good voice, you just go there, choose a message, record, even using your uh, smartphone and send it to us. We'll be very happy to stream it here. And by the way, thank you, Melissa. And you're right. She says, what a great way of using social media by reaching us all in topics of great interest. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And, you know, it's, today it's about spirituality and politics. Very sensitive topic. I know it's very tricky to talk about it, but it's inevitable. Before I go there, let me remind you, if you are in the United States, on April 23rd, we have the 10th U.S. Spiritist Symposium. What a joy. It's a joyful moment in San Diego, California. The United States Spiritist Council is organizing its 10th U.S. Spiritist Symposium on April 23rd. And the topic is the theme the transformative power of love. We have speakers from around the United States gathering together, and the registration fee is very symbolic. It's only $20 for a whole day event. And you can't forget that if children uh, come with you, they will have their own room working on these very topics, on the topics of the transformative power of love. I think this is memorable for a child. They will never forget the experience. They will make friends for a lifetime. They will have the opportunity of uh, talking about spirituality, things that nourish us for immortality, Jesus, God, etc., etc. Just go to the website, spiritissymposium.org. Now, Let us go straight to the topic. I know you're asking, Vanessa, I want to know more about uh, spirituality and politics. Hmm. I'm going to, because we're Facebooking it, we're live streaming here on Facebook, I'm going to read a short message that Emmanuel wrote to us in a book that probably many people don't know. It's the book Money. In Portuguese, Dinheiro, by Emmanuel, through Chico Xavier. It's, you know, 400 plus books. Many people don't know about this book. 
but you shall get to know. The United States Spiritist Council just published it. Just go to Amazon.com or uh, Spiritist.us and get your copy. Money. Little cute book and the cover. Remember, we had a contest. Thank you very much for everybody who participated. But our friend Eduardo Dubao da Vega, he won a contest and he won a hug of us. <laughs> we hugged him in gratitude because he's a wonderful Spiritist worker as well. And he designed the cover of the book Money. Get to know more about it. It's a book that is a must for all of us. Emilio didn't write it by chance. And on chapter 8, he says the following. Before God and Caesar. In our usual relationship with Caesar, symbolizing the political government, let us not forget that the world belongs to God, not to Caesar. So that we are not parasites of the social organization in which we are called to live. Many believe themselves fully exonerated of any liability to the administrative power of earth, simply because one day they pay taxes to the government that leads them and then demanded of them sacrificial services over a long time. We must always remember that we are of God, not of Caesar, and that Caesar has no means to replace God's assistance amongst us. Therefore, the law that expresses the determination of the on high counts on our constant participation in goodness if we want to achieve the victory of real progress. Examining the issues in these terms, let us hear the voice of the Lord speaking to us in the acoustics of our conscience and seek to execute our duties without expecting that Caesar will meet our expectations or will visit us with its things. Work is the regulator of life. Let us cultivate it diligently, using resources that we have in consolidating the best for all around us. Assisting others is the recommendation of heaven, Therefore, let us assist other always by aiding an unfortunate fellow, by protecting the spring that is threatened by dryness, or by planting a beneficial tree that tomorrow will speak for us by the wayside. We will all be accountable before divine providence regarding the goods that we are temporarily lent, thus, Without constraining human authority, let us exercise understanding and kindness, patience, patience and tolerance, optimism and faith, putting out fires of rebellion and criticism wherever they are, stimulating instead the planting of values that are likely to establish harmony and prosperity around us. It is not worth giving Caesar some coins each year, than every day covering it with accusations and reproaches. Let us give what belongs to God while offering the best of ourselves in favor of others. Thus, Caesar will actually be able to sustain us and serve us today and always in the name of the Lord. Ouch! Emmanuel! That's very interesting, right? This is a message Chapter 8 from the book Before God of uh, Money. And this message is about Before God and Caesar. It's about spirituality and politics. Dear listener, it's clearly saying to us, and you're welcome to join us with your comments and your questions. We are here live at Kardec Radio. And remember, this is um, about spirituality and politics, a very sensitive topic, but Emmanuel addressed it. Remember, Emmanuel was a senator once, not only once, he was actually twice, because he was his uh, grandfather, the Publi Lenta Lasura, and uh, he was a senator then as well. Just read the book, 2,000 years ago, by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. You can get a hold of it at com. But right now, back to the topic, spirituality and politics. Very interesting. 
he rescues um, the concept of Caesar as brought in by Jesus. Caesar as the political government. And he says, the world belongs to God, not to Caesar. That's the take-home message number one for us. Let's be very practical. We know that the leaders of the world think, oh, I am ruling the world. Everything is passing. All of them come and go, come and go, sooner or later. And it has been this way since the beginning of times. If we read the book On the Way to the Light by Emmanuel, we get to know about the history of humankind through the eyes of spiritism, and we get to know many of them thought that they were even gods or semi-gods. Where are they now? They are not even there. The great ancient Egypt, gone. Great Greece, gone physically. The spiritual and the cultural heritage is still living with us, inside of us, because we were there. But the material empire was transferred. Transferred to other locations. So here, Emmanuel is telling us the first thing. The world belongs to God. No matter if we, the creatures of God, think that the world belongs to us. We belong to the world. But the world does not belong to us. Hmm. Mathematical logics. Exactly. One thing is different from the other. We belong to the world, but the world does not belong to us. We are here temporarily. We have come from different places, and we may be transferred to different planets. And Jesus said quite well at the Sermon of the Mount, if we want to stay on the earth, we need to do one thing. Blessed are the meek and peacemakers, or peace-loving wherever way we want to say it. Because, you know, we can say the same thing in different ways. It's so funny, and this is just a parenthesis. When we try to do spiritism in English, many people say, no, that's not the way you say it. Well, let me share something with you. We can say the same ideas in many different ways. There are poetic ways, philosophical ways, scientific ways. The way we write in science, is very elaborated. The way we write to a friend in any means a different way. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just that it's different. And that's the beauty of a language. We can uh, use it to fit in and send the messages that we need. By the way, we send more messages in a nonverbal way than verbally speaking. Back to the topic. Before God and Caesar. Emmanuel reminds the second message here for us is many believe themselves fully exonerated of any liability to the administrative power of earth simply because one day they paid taxes to the governmental machine that leads them. And they demand sacrificial services over a long time. And, and let me share this with you, dear listener. And, and this is not to be controversial, but we really need to touch the topic. When we see corruption in a government, of course, we shall not stay quiet. But the first question that we need to ask is, am I doing any better? No, Vanessa, I don't uh, rob or steal, etc. There are many different ways of robbing and Robbing and stealing is not only about uh, money, it's about time. When we see, as Leon Denis in the book After Life says, about selfishness, when we enjoy the resources of life, forgetting about the people who have less, we are misusing the resources of God because we are keeping it to ourselves alone. Yeah, our society think it's fine and applauds it. But Emmanuel is reminding us in this message in the book Money, chapter 8, Before God and Caesar, that we cannot demand 
on the government any sacrifices if we don't also partake in helping others? Are we doing better than the government? Are we doing any better? And let's talk about Jesus. Have we ever heard Jesus as the governor of the planet when he came here on the earth, knocking on the door of Caesar and telling the emperor of Rome, of the Roman Empire, hey, 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 what are you doing? I created this planet and you're messing it up. You can't do this. Why haven't Jesus done it? Why? He is our guide and model, says, say the spirits to Kardec in the book, the spirits book. Why hasn't Jesus, why didn't Jesus demand anything on Caesar, on the government of the time? Because he was passive? Because he was condescending? No. Because he knows. He cannot change anything, but help the ones who would like to change things in themselves. So he focused on those who are in need. So sincerely, based on these messages, if you're wasting your time fighting against politicians, using Facebook to criticize them, Emmanuel is telling you, it's to no use. It's to no use. Of course, we have the right to have our opinion. But, he says, we must always remember that we are of God, not of Caesar. That Caesar has no means to replace God's assistance amongst us. Meaning, we cannot help the government by criticizing it, whether in Brazil, in Europe... Or in the United States, many people have been writing to Kardec Radio asking us about what should we do regarding the the elections that are upcoming in the United States. Many people are scared that Donald Trump may become a, a true candidate. <clears throat> and when we ask the mentors of Kardec Radio, the spirit mentors, because of course, good works have spirit mentors. We have not created it ourselves. They said, Vanessa, the message says it all. The, we have already said what we have to say. Read the book. And it says here, The determination of the own high counts on our constant participation in goodness. It's very easy to point a finger to the government that is not working and is in corruption or the elections that are going wild and crazy. But what are we doing? Very selfishly, we go home, take care of our families, take care of our things, enjoy our lives. But we want others to think of everyone, to make sacrifices to the general good. Because, as he said, we pay taxes one day. And he says, no, even though you're paying taxes, you have no right of demanding on others if we don't do anything. We can say we don't agree with this and participate, but he says, let us hear the voice of the Lord speaking to us in the acoustics of our conscience and seek to execute our duties without expecting that Caesar will meet our expectations or will visit us with its things. If you're getting right now on this program we are reading a message that was um, written by the Spirit Emmanuel through the medium Chico Xavier in a book that was recently, very recently published by the United States Spiritist Council. The book is named Money, and it's a book that is in Portuguese, but barely new by people, barely known by people. It's named Dinheiro. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for participating. I will read more of your messages right here. Uh, later, thank you so much, Renata, Santos, Erica, my dear cousin. Uh, yes, you're right. The United States is a um, Spiritist Council, a wonderful organization. And, you know, we have the symposium this year. Rita de Cássia, what is the future about politics? Now we just can see things going to bed all over the world. Good morning, Vanessa. Thank you, Rita, for participating 
And you know, friends, it's so interesting because it's telling us here the world is of God. So trust, faith. And you know, we're little by little releasing the chapters of the 15 video series on Leon Denis Immortal Wisdom. The latest one we've released is about his chapter on faith, hope, and consolations. And it's very important that we trust God, okay? It's very, very important. And Melissa is telling us, uh, by expressing our thoughts, we find mind like people. Isn't this the goal of speaking your mind publicly? You're right. We have to pay attention, Melissa. We can't simply say uh, things out of our minds. We have to pray. Pray for the, the politicians that are going cuckoo because they need help. You know, in the book Sex and Destiny by Andrea Lewis, there is such a wonderful chapter. Something that we need to learn. The more we criticize, the more we're pushing people to the abyss of their wrongdoings. This is a chapter that was psychographed by Chico Xavier and the spirit author is Andrea Lewis. The book Sex and Destiny, Sex e Destino, Sex and Destiny. It says, they were at the hospital, at the visiting room, and dear listeners, Andre Louis shows to us that when he's judging people, okay, when he's judging people, he is pushing people to the abyss of their wrongdoing. So hard. But, you know, here Emmanuel tells us, assisting others is the recommendation of heaven. Therefore, let us assist others always. By aiding an unfortunate fellow, by protecting that spring that is threatened by dryness, like the Fraternity Without Borders organization that uh, Dr. Ina Moreira has been telling us. He's the medical uh, coordinator of the field expeditions to Mozambique, Africa. And, you know, you've never heard Dr. Ina Moreira pointing fingers and telling people, do this, don't do that according to the politics. You know, he's minding his business. That's what Jesus guided us to. We have to focus on what we have to do. Why? Because Emmanuel says, we'll all be accountable before divine providence regarding the goods that we are temporarily lent. Do we know how many people see us, for example, on Facebook or social media in general, Twitter, whatever. There are so many tools nowadays. And see what we're doing here asking, oh, but my life is so miserable now. Why does this person deserve to be eating at that restaurant while I'm here? I tell you, Leo Denise says, don't be that selfish. Keep your happiness. If that's what makes you happy to eat a beautiful meal at a restaurant, keep it to yourself and your friends. Because there are many people who are there living a lot of problems. I'm not saying don't show your happiness, but show your immortal happiness. Because, you know, the food in the plate in a restaurant is passing. Why does it matter? We are no longer teenagers, dear listeners. We are no longer teenagers to be in that high school mentality of showing like I have better than you, I have it, you don't, etc. So it's also about politics. Nowadays many people in politics are playing like teenagers, like high school students. It doesn't feel good, right? But don't worry. Emmanuel is telling us it's not worth giving Caesar some coins each year than every day covering it with accusations and reproaches. So bottom line, third uh, take-home message, don't mind uh, criticizing. Do not go by criticizing your politicians. We can make comments, but criticizing, wasting time, everybody. I made a decision according to the messages of Emmanuel because I don't want to go there. Everyone whom I see placing a message on Facebook and it comes to my network saying 
this politician, that politician, I go and follow the person. Because I say, you know, I don't want to get there. I don't. You have the right to say whatever you like. But I, I'm not going to enter that mindset. Pray. Trust. Each and every person in this world is a child of God. Let us give God what belongs to God. While offering the best of ourselves in favor of others. Thus, Caesar will actually be able to sustain us, serve us to the noise in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> this is just a break for those who are live on Facebook. I'm so sorry. We're going to give a short break by listening to a message and then we'll be right back. Defense Against Obsession Brother X Spirit Chico Javier Medium It hurt to see Brother Mauricio Tessie prostrated in acute rheumatoid arthritis. He prayed, suffered, hoped. Pain spread itself from his swollen knee to the whole body. We accompanied his discarnated mother, Mrs. Etavina, who was a dedicated friend of ours while on earth. We shared the prayer while the team of spiritual nurses acted with spiritual healing resources from our plan of action. Ending the aiding task, my old friend stood up and respectively asked to the head of the team, My dear friend, can I in the mother's position know why so much delay for the final recovery of my son? The questioned individual simply replied, Undoubtedly. Here is the record of his reactions in the most recent days. And with the accuracy of a technician in his own expertise, he drew from his briefcase a small sheet of paper on which we could immediately read the following instructions, simple and expressive, which were happening on the very day of our presence in the humble room. Mauricio Tessi, 36 years incarnated, nature of disease, providential, phase experimental individual merit due to service to the community until the first symptoms of the disease none reason for being ill defense against obsession and madness help to be given help Mauricio with the magnetic passes but only for physical substance and controlled relief until positive spiritual betterment history Mauricio's friends and benefactors living on higher spheres vouch for his present reincarnation. They also observe Mauricio's tendency to completely spoil the given opportunity. Worried about it, they had requested that he remain ill according to previous lives' debts expressed in his peri spirit. They took such action to prevent Mauricio from associating with unhappy entities related to his previous lives. Such entities were for the longest time connected to vampirization and criminality, to whom Mauricio was little by little getting accommodated. Observations from January 4th to the 29th, 1967. Date. Physical condition and spiritual condition. Day 4. Crisis. Faith, prayer, humility. Day 5. Better tranquility and stubbornness. Day six, greater improvement, shady thoughts, obsessors nearby. Day seven, crisis, obedience, resignation, kindness. Day eight, acute crisis, moral elevation, prayer. Day nine, acute crisis, noble promises of outreach service, mental elevation. Day 10, better, Good mood, rebelliousness. Day 11, great improvement. Intolerance, less dignified ideas. Attracted obsessors. Day 12, great improvement. Imbalance, obsessors in his bedroom. Day 13, crisis, serenity. Day 14, aggravated crisis, superior emotions. Day 15, acute crisis, moving faith, compassion, generosity. 
Day 16, Improvement, Calmness, Irritation. Day 17, Great Improvement, Unmentionable Thoughts, Upcoming Obsessors. Day 18, Great Improvement, Obsessors Dominating, Mauricio. Day 19, Crisis, Repelled Obsessors. Day 20, Acute Crisis, Trust in God. Day 21, Acute Crisis, Plans of Doing Charity Work, Promises of Sanctifying Work. Day 22, Improvement, Boredom, Bitterness. Day 23, Great Improvement, Pitiable Ideas, Interested Obsessors, Interested. Day 24, Great Improvement, Obsessors by His Aura, Inner Chaos. Day 25, Crisis, Gentleness, Confidence. Day 26, Acute Crisis, Affability, Benevolence. Day 27, Acute Crisis, Sweetness, Lucidity, Compassion towards Others. Day 28, Acute Crisis, Beautiful Inner Transformation, Rays of Light, Moments of Prayer. Sister Etelvina returned her son's chart between quiet and sad, thanking the devoted cooperator. Thank you, friend. Mauricio is my son. However, both he and I, as much as you, we are children of God, and the law of the Lord was created for the good of us all. Soon after, the aiding team dispersed. For a long time, I still remained alongside the sick, trying to meditate on my own needs and take the lesson in. As we're back, back after the break, listening to the message, Defense. This is part two. We're here live on Facebook and uh talking about spirituality and politics. By the way, thank you so much for joining us, both uh, on live stream at Facebook and here at Kardec Radio, Blog Talk Radio, chat room. And let me share with you, Marcos De Clay, thank you so much, Marcos, from the Toronto Spiritist Society. What a wonderful group. Uh, He said earlier today, greetings, dear friends. I always like to remember what Gandhi said, be the change we wish to see in the world. Let's do better in our circle of influence and give a more education to our kids, the future business women and men and future politicians. That in addition to learn how to vote. You're right. He or she who criticized must do better. What uh, would we really do better if we were occupying those high profile roles exposed to ego, vanity, power? We all have inferior tendencies, but can't we? But as Christians, we should pray for those who fail. See you later. Sorry I have to leave. Thank you so much, Marcos, for sharing your thoughts. And you're so right. Thank you. And thank you. Dr. Ender Moreira is here with us. Thank you. And I saw Ney Nicolato as well. Thank you. Now, you know, we also have our dear friend, Thais Rezio Wagner. She uh, is in Atlanta right, Georgia, and she said the well-being of each community is the responsibility of everyone, not just the government. Paying taxes or just giving money to church does not exempt us from doing good to others. It's uh, an everyday exercise at first, and one day it will be a good habit. You're so right, Thais. Thank you so much for sharing it. And uh, Erika uh, Anceloni here, hi. She says, how can we blame others if we ourselves are doing nothing to change the situation with love? You're so right. So what else can the good spirits tell us? So this is another message that is in a book that hopefully will be published soon. Spirit is Conduct by Andrea Lewis through the medium Valdo Vieira. Chapter 10, the spiritist attitude in political encounters. What does André Luiz... Now, we read a message in the book Money by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. Now we are reading a message by André Luiz in another book named um, Spiritist Conduct or Conduta Espirita. The translation is already in. The revision is coming along. Soon it will be published, hopefully. And Emmanuel says... We need 
to have uh, actually Andre Lewis a defined and clear position of the social aspirations and the Christian spiritist ideals without mistaking the interests of Caesar with the duties of the Lord. Isn't that amazing how Emmanuel and Andrea Lewis work so hand-in-hand, hand, the same concept, different books, different spirit authors, same aligned message, saying, hey, we're not here to focus on Caesar, but to fulfill God's will. How do we fulfill God's will? We need to ask ourselves often, like, what does God would want me to do? Love, help, always. We can always forget a little bit about our needs and help others, right? Right. Only the spirit is eternal, says Andrea Luiz in this message. Distance yourself from extreme partisanship. Oh, my Lord, what is it? For example, in the United States, we talk so much about the, you know, Democratic, Republicans. What do we do? He said, if you're a spiritist, don't go to extremes. Those with, with extreme political stances are subject to mental and spiritual imbalances. Isn't that exactly what we're seeing this the the elections nowadays? Many people are so confused, like going wild. The 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 candidates, they some of them are going wild, going to extremes. And the, Andre Lewis, as a spirit doctor, he knows if we take that extreme stance, we are incurring in mental and spiritual imbalances. By the way, I need to give a parenthesis here and Say thank you to those who, uh, Vivian Figeri Braga and uh, Carlos Diaz, Giuliano, um, Maya, who helped us translate these messages, and also to Bruna Britz and Rich Popowski for helping us revise it. The next paragraph, let us listen to Andrea Luis's words. My opinion doesn't matter. I rely upon the good spirits. We're just facilitating the, the, the thoughts here. Under no circumstance, a spiritist podium should be transformed into an instrument to disseminate political propaganda, not even when sympathetic subletters are presented in the name of charity. Deception favors the denomination of evil. So, Right now at Kardec Radio, we're not taking sides. We're not telling you to do this, that, and the other in elections. On the contrary, we're just passing on the information that the spirits have released through the illuminated hands of Chico Xavier. So, fulfill the duties of citizen and voter. Oh, Andrea Luis, you're amazing. Fulfill the duties of citizen and voter Choosing the candidates of the elected post according to the dictates of your own conscience. However, without engaging, entangling yourself in the web of party fanaticism, discernment leads to right choices. Ha! Ah, whoa! This message, I am so excited about it because it's so clear. We have to take part. We need to vote. We need to fulfill our duties as citizens, including voting. In the United States, voting is a privilege. It's not a right. It's a right. It's not like an obligation. But it's a privilege, they say. It is, and it's supposed to be. I have to do it voluntarily and be very conscientious. Very conscientious. Choosing the candidates based on what? Not the bills that are going to be paid, because I know in some countries, if you talk to a politician, they may pay your bill, you know, medical bill, electricity bill, and then you're going to pay. I heard a story uh, two years ago about a woman who is a maid in Brazil, and she said, you know, at election time, I don't pay my bills. And I asked her, why not? 
she said, I don't pay my bills because I talk to the candidates. And uh, I asked them if they can pay my bills. So, you know, this election was so good because I had four candidates. I asked them, each one of them paid a different bill for me. And who did you vote for if they all helped you in some way? I I voted for a fifth one. That's outrageous. So that's why we're saying corruption is not out there seated in that post. Corruption begins with all the dimensions of our society. That is just a reflection of that apparent small corruption, but big as well. So that's why Emmanuel in the previous message said, we cannot point fingers and say, hey, you need to help everybody while I'm just minding my own business in my selfishness. And Andrea Lewis is reminding us we need to fulfill our duties as citizens voting and he says according to our own conscience avoid political deals that claim to defend based on individual integrity the doctrinal principles or attract social prestige to spiritism in exchange for votes or solidarity to parties and candidates you know for example in the United States we have seen recently people using religious um, uh, approaches to gain voters. Are you going to buy into that? Because if I'm really serious about it, I don't do that. I don't play that game. Irrespective of the name, we need to be fully aware. Share it with others. If we're truly Christians, As the Pope says, we don't create walls, barriers between us and others. To the contrary, we unite, bring people together. Everyone, and this is what the world is all about. Spiritism, says Andrea Lewis, does not stand with purely earthbound interests. If tomorrow... A political candidate says, I'm a spiritist. Are you going to vote for him just because he's a spiritist? Ah, Dr. Ina Maria is sharing here with us live. Love is the real divine politics, and with it we should be really committed to. We may respect each other no matter what the other thinks or believes in terms of politics, religion, so on. Our conduct, let me see if I can read more here. Our conduct shows our real belief and how we can change the world around us. Without it, we just prescribe transformation for us without moral authority. Thank you, Dr. Moreira. You know, you have so much to share with us, and we are very, very grateful to it. It's very important to listen to these very words Dr. Moreira is sharing with us. We prescribe things, but we have no moral authority. So... What did Jesus teach us? What has he been teaching us actually, right? What has he been teaching us right now and always because Jesus is still living. It's not dead. The physical body passed away, but him in true self, in, in, in his true spirit is living, helping us, guiding us. Mark Lewis, you're welcome always. He's here at Block Talk Radio Checked Room. Would like to share a comment? We're waiting for your comment. Meanwhile, we're going to keep reading the rest of the message by Dr. Andrea Lewis through Chico Xavier in the book Conduta Espírita, published by the Brazilian Spiritist Federation, which is already in English, coming along in its final revision. Do not commercialize the vote of those who share your ideals, whose minds may be influenced by your words or cooperation. Faith will never be a commodity for the human marketplace. Oh, what a statement. Faith will never be a commodity for the human marketplace. So whenever a politician plays that game of using our religious point of view to gain our vote, uh, 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 it's a red flag. 
red flag. People can come from all ways of life and be a politician. Many people nowadays, and I say this, are voting or are cheering up for ex-candidates because they are against Muslims. And we say we're Christians? Is that what Christianity is all about? I doubt, because from what we know regarding Jesus' approach, he is all-embracing. I doubt he would refuse to be friends with a Muslim. Faith will never be a commodity for the human marketplace. And Andrea Lewis continues, Under no circumstance condemn those who find themselves invested in administrative responsibility of public interest. Ah, what is that again? Let us listen. Under no circumstance condemn those who find themselves invested in administrative responsibilities of public interest. That's the spiritist conduct in political encounters. Instead, as Marcos de Clay said, pray in favor of them so that they may release themselves with satisfaction from the commitments they incurred. In order to do the good, it's necessary that the benefits of prayer defy the whip of criticism. <gasps> Love, Andrea Lewis. Prevent lectures and discussions of political order in doctrinal institutions without forgetting that the service of the gospel is the essential focus. So we can never use the Spiritist podium in our Spiritist centers and events to... Uh, take part in political debates. Love spiritism for it. Thank you, Kardec. Thank you, Chico Xavier. Thank you, Andrea Luis. Thank you, Emmanuel, Joana de Angeles, and all the good spirits, Diaz da Cruz, and many others who are guiding us in this pathway. Don't go there. What we're doing here at Kardec Radio is sharing this exact guidance. We're not talking, giving names of politicians but we're just bringing the philosophy, the spiritist philosophy, and how its framework is going to help us be a good citizen, vote with discernment, as says Andrea Luis and Emmanuel, but pray. Why don't we begin a prayer group in our center for the politicians? We don't need to give names, but pray weekly. A vibrational meeting just for dedicated to the elections. You don't need to say names, but let's pray that everything goes right the way God, God's will is pointed to. That's a good idea. Focus group prayer for those who are in those positions. And finally, dear listener, prevent lectures and discussions there strictly speaking there are no official representatives of spiritism in any field of human politics no servant is able to serve two masters said jesus in luke chapter 16 verse 13 striking and mark lewis is here telling us the following perhaps society should be looking at reorganizing themselves in a way that the haves and haves not can find a balance between the social structure we are currently living in and the necessary changes to accommodate newcomers to this world. If population hits the mark of 10 billion in the next 20 years, it's inevitable that societies will be forced to review their rules of law and economic system if wars are to be averted. Thank you, Mark. You always bring good comments. And you know, this is food for thought for us. We would like to share that uh, in the Spirits book, there is a beautiful take from the Spirits regarding uh, the increase of population on the earth. And let's say, you know, from the beginning of the 20th century to the 21st century, 2 billion spirits to 8 billion spirits on the earth, and we're still here. We're still here. So never be... Desperate, because Emmanuel said, the world belongs to God, not to Caesar. 
Can you tell that there are many good people working on the earth right now? Yes, we can. Go to goodnewsnetwork.org and you will see how many good things are happening around the world. You can choose right now at Huffington Post, Washington Post, New York Times, the biggest newspapers around the world. They have chosen to have a special column dedicated to good news. Thank God journalism is shifting gears little by little, but it is. Even CNN has a big spot for those who are doing great things. And you're right, Melissa. Andre Lewis couldn't say better about politics. Love it. Me too. And you know what? We're sharing this very message in the next Spiritist Magazine. Of course, the Spiritist Magazine is the way and means in which we can share messages that are going to take a while to be published. In their very books, of course. We have uh, thousands of Spiritist books and it's going to take a while to have them all in all the languages, including English. So, meanwhile, the Spiritist Magazine is here for you. You know, the Spiritist Magazine is free, free of charge. Go to the com. We have an app at our smartphones, tablets. You can download it free of charge. Read it at your leisure, wherever you are. If you like the PDF, you can go to the website, download it. And if you want the very magazine... The copy is there. We don't have subscriptions anymore, but you can go to the website, thespiritismagazine.com, and click on our partner, HP MagCloud. Make your order. You're going to receive your magazine at your door. Love it. I know we like paper, right? And you can have it. It's up to you. We don't have subscriptions, but you can go to HP MagCloud and buy your copy. Just order it. It's $10. That's it. And it's a magazine that is timeless. Let's recall it. The Spiritist magazine has contents that it doesn't pertain to the very time we're living in. It's immortal. The teachings of the spirits serve purpose for immortality. So the future generations shall also benefit from it. And you know, here we have... I love you too, Erica. The teachings of Leon Denis, the series. If you want to watch the previous ones, Kardec Radio has a YouTube channel. We have been posting the Leon Denis video series there. Or you can go to the Spiritist Side of Virginia's website. We have a video page. Leon Denis videos are there. If you ask us why it's taking us a little bit of time to publish all of them. By the way, hi, Yonara. Nice seeing you. I know our friend Geraldo Lemosnet is often there with you, and he talks wonderful things about the center. We hope to see you soon sometime, uh, this year maybe. And Dr. Moreira is kindly sharing his thoughts here. We should, he says, and let me see, we should not only pray for the politics, but also send spiritual vibrations in our mediumistic sessions in order to help them accomplish their duties. We don't know how many forces act on them. And he continues saying, um, the inner and outside the system and how difficult it is to keep faithful to their personal beliefs and proposals. Besides, that they receive a lot of bad vibrations from those who are not satisfied in the persecution of many spirits that make everything worse. Let us help them in our spiritual work. Beautiful idea, Dr. Moreira. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Because praying and also helping them through the mediumistic meetings. The mediumistic meetings, Dr. Moreira says, is a good venue to help the the politicians who are going wild, they are not alone, dear listeners. They are not alone. And you know, Rita de is saying, let's make a better life in this wonderful planet, loving always. Thank you so much. And I think Erica is making a comment here about the video of Fraternity Without Borders. Let's not forget, pass it on, beautiful works, fraternitywithoutborders.org helps more than 3,000 orphan children in Mozambique, Africa. By only giving $20 a month, you can help lots of children. Oh, dear listen, can you believe we're just five minutes away from wrapping up the program today? 
I know. The program today is so important, Spirituality and Politics. We read a message, Chapter 8, from the book Money, which is published by the United States Spiritist Council, author Emmanuel, through the psychography of Chico Xavier. And then second, we read Andrea Louis' message, The Spiritist Approach in Political Encounters, very fitting for the current times. We can help. And today we're going to help more. How about if I invite you for a prayer? How would you feel about it? I'm going to close my eyes. And if you're watching us, forgive me, but prayers, prayer. When I close my eyes, I feel more focused. I could pray with my open eyes, but I tell you, it would take me a more evolved step to actually do so and keep myself focused. But wherever you are right now, let us pray. Let's do what the good spirits have suggested us and pray for the politicians, for the leaders in this world, reminding all of us that the true leader is God and the world belongs to God and we belong to the world. So we belong to God too. So there is no fear. There is no desperation because God is in charge and God assigned wonderful spirits like Jesus Christ to guide our lives. So let us just focus on it. How about now? If you're listening to Kardec Radio, I'm going to play the Ave Maria on the background just to help us feel more inspired. But if you're there watching us on Facebook Live, please stop for a second. Let's form a current of prayer in the whole world and help one another. Inspiring them to the greater use of the temporary power that was given them. May they feel loving angelic spirits guiding them to greater acts of solidarity, fraternity around the world fostering bridges of friendship from their communities to the, to the neighboring ones. May we stay under your guidance, protection, 
as you grant us permission to wrap up this learning opportunity with one another, and so be it. So, dear listener, here we are. We have just wrapped up the program today. Fascinating. Loved Emmanuel and Andrea Lewis take on politics. The video is here. You can recap and share because it's a message of hope, optimism, and being proactive. Thank you, everyone, who has been with us since 11 a.m. And you know, Kardec Radio is here for us to help us nourish ourselves because you know, how do we nourish ourselves? We nourish ourselves through good spiritual food and Spiritism has a banquet of love for us. In a week from today, we're going to talk here live. Very interesting Dr. Luis Melmadrona will be back. He's a neuroscientist. He's going to talk about um, spiritual healing. He's experienced as a neuroscientist in his research on the Native American healing. And we're going to bridge it up with spiritism. Thank you, Eduardo. Bye-bye. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you, everyone. A big hug to everyone. And don't forget, tomorrow at 8 p.m., Kardec Radio has Spiritist Awareness with hosts from around the world. And Monday, we also have a program, Spiritist for Kids. The two faculty from the University of Delaware, Spiritist Friends of the Spiritist Side of Virginia, Carol Correa, Mark Smith, are leading another show for the kids. Many blessings, dear listener. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.kardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.